What's going on, people? This is the Schwantz27, and this is the first episode in a new series on my channel called Schwantz's Stories. You guys had indicated to me on one of my last Getting to Know videos that you wanted some more life stories on the channel, so I'm giving you fuckers what you wanted. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> now, since I'm an old ass man with gray hairs and wrinkly balls, I have some life experience that may be beneficial for you guys out there. So listen up. This this 30 year old is going to teach you some new tricks. These stories are going to be crazy, sometimes serious, have that oh shit factor, but they'll always be entertaining for you guys, or so that's the plan. This is a story from back when I was in college. Now, since I was an alcoholic in college, actually, you know what? Hold on a second. I'm going to apply the transitive property of math right here, an if therefore kind of thing. If college student, therefore alcoholic. Okay, moving on. Since I was a college student, <laughs> I'd drink during the week and sometimes I'd have class the next day that I'd skip if I was way too hungover. This particular story takes place on a Thursday and of course, I was an idiot and had a class on a Friday, which everyone tries to avoid for this particular reason. Sometimes though, you weren't given a choice if there was only one variation for the course that was offered. Anyway, so I go out for Thirsty Thursday to this particular bar and there's this girl that I knew that was there. She was pretty hot and we were halfway decent friends because we played intramural soccer together so I started charming her up and buying her drinks. Believe me boys, the easiest way to the vagina is through the bottom of a beer. <laughs> so we're having a good time talking and dancing when she goes off to the bathroom. Now her roommate who is not that attractive comes over to me and is fall over as rigid as a fucking tarp on a baseball field wasted. She basically falls on me while standing up, and of course, I'm taking it in stride, just talking to her and dancing with her a little bit. Of course, I'm getting pretty pissed for all of you across the pond. For you guys at home, I'm not getting mad, I'm getting drunk. So, I'm in a very loosey-goosey kind of mode. I really just don't care. When the original girl comes back, she sees me dancing with the roommate, and this other dude starts putting his moves on her. Well, fuck, what do I do now? I just can't step in there and claim my pride because I'm over here fucking around with drunks McGee. See how nice guys finish last. A blurry 30 minutes later, the four of us decide to leave in a cab and go back to their place. I lived about a two minute walk on campus from these girls since I had been to their house before for parties and shit. And as we're getting out of this cab, which was actually a van because they just picked up the college kids in gigantic vans and cram like 15 fucking people back in it, but it was only a dollar a person. Hell yeah, I'll take a dollar cab ride. And I helped both the roommate and her out of the van, like the true gentleman that I am. So as she's holding onto my hand, stepping down out of the van, she whispers in my ear, What the fuck am I doing with this kid? Yes, I have the same exact feeling with your roommate. This is awesome. I concocted a plot in my head and it's going to unfold almost perfectly. Here's how it happens. The four of us eventually go back to their dorm room and the girl with me just flops into bed and nearly passes out in her normal fucking clothes. The girl that I want to hook up with, she is pretty drunk as well, but she's not that fucking complete of a mess. So she says to the dude with her, I'm going to go to the bathroom and get into pajamas. Awesome. Here's my opportunity. I blurt out, I've got to piss and head out the door right behind her. Now, as we're both walking towards the bathroom, I say to her, what the fuck am I doing here too? Your roommate is out like three strikes at a baseball game right now. As we get to the bathroom door, she says, you can go pee first. So I open the door and grab her hand to pull her inside with me. We start making out, like sloppy as fuck. Saliva's going fucking everywhere, just like a dog shaking off its wet fur. It's a game of tonsil hockey that's like the all-star game where nobody is playing defense. You know how you kiss when you're hammered. You try not to make too much movement or else you'll get the spins. She starts grabbing at my jeans to unbutton them. I slide my hand up her thigh because she was wearing a jean skirt. She's tugging on me. I'm tugging on her. Well, not exactly tugging on her. That's not how you do third base. <laughs> you don't want to rip her fucking clitoris off. That would be a no-no. So, then after, you know, some casual petting, I ask her, do you have a condom? This is my way of saying I want to fuck without actually saying it. Also, use protection. Pulling out didn't work for your mom and dad, and that's why you're here. <laughs> Anyways, so she goes, yeah, we're in a bathroom. There's got to be a box of condoms in here somewhere. 
So now with my pants down around my ankles and her skirt up to her ribs, we start searching for a condom box here in this bathroom. Nothing. Are you fucking kidding me? How are there no fucking condoms in a bathroom? I know people keep them by their bed, but you gotta have a stash somewhere, right? So she goes, I'll go get one from another room, but what if I get caught? I basically tell her that she should tell her roommate if she gets caught that I'm feeling sick and you're getting a bottle of water for me. God, I'm so fucking brilliant. At this point, I put my pants back on and eagerly wait for this hot girl coming back to finish this deed, so to speak. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, she's back. Let's fucking go. I'm just about to undo my pants when I see her fucking roommate follow her back. Fuck my life. She slurs, how are you doing? I want to make sure you're doing okay. I just want to scream at this point at the top of my lungs, but instead, I just say I'm feeling much better, and, of course, since I'm a genius, I've got another fucking plan. Wait until this sloppy girl inevitably passes out, and then somehow get the other girl to go back into the bathroom with me. I say, I'm not all that tired, and wink at the hot girl to indicate my plan, but of course, the signals must have gotten messed up, because not more than two minutes later, her and the dude that she came with are snoring over in the other bed. Fuck me. Meanwhile, me and her roommate are still awake. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, when in Rome, right? Scumbag Schwantz, of course, still hooks up with the roommate at this point. Let me tell you guys something. When you're drunk, you can still tell the difference between a girl that's hot and one that's not. It's just that you don't give a shit at this point. Your standards just plummet like the stock market in 2008. This is what happened here. I told her that I was getting the spins in order to get out of doing things, you know, like making out and perhaps going down on her, but instead she happily gave me a mediocre blowjob, which is kind of an oxymoron, because you cannot really have a bad blowjob, right? I don't even think that's possible. Anyways, afterwards we both passed out until the next day. Now, I woke up around 10 o'clock in the morning and started to get dressed to get the fuck out of there. I didn't want the hot girl to even know what happened after she passed out, and I'm still kind of a little bit of ashamed that I did end up getting a blowjob from a girl that couldn't even speak straight. So, I get up and start to put my shoes on when the roommate wakes up and tells me, you should stay for a little while. I tell her, you know, I can't. I gotta go to class, so I've gotta get going. Even though I don't even know if I actually did or not. I just want an excuse to bounce. She opens up the curtains by her bed and says, but it's a snow day. I look out the window in horror. It's fucking snowing. A lot. Please don't tell me I am stuck in this godforsaken house with this wench for the entire fucking day. Holy shit, she's gonna force me to stay here because my excuse for leaving is no longer valid. Fuck me, why do my plans always backfire? Maybe I'm not the James Bond I think that I am after all. Five minutes later, after trying to think of a way out of this while laying in bed next to that... Yes, it's bad enough that I hooked up with her in the first place. It's even worse when you see in the next morning after your standards have gone back up to where they normally should be. Anyways, I'm staring at the ceiling, trying to figure out a fucking way out of this. She finally gets up to go to the bathroom. I quickly put on my shoes and bolt out the fucking door. So fast. This is one snow day that I did not want to spend inside when I woke up. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you had a laugh at my expense, and let me know if you want more of these stories. You can even suggest a story topic, and if I got one that fits, then I'll use it, of course. This has been The Schwanz 27, and I'm bolting just like me out the door on a snow day. Until next time.